Hi, I'm John, and welcome to the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery, or TMAG. I'm here to give you a brief overview of the historic Bond store and the exhibitions it contains. I'll also point you to some of the resources available to support your self-guided visit to TMAG when exploring these galleries with your students. Let's start with the building itself. The Bond store was built using convict labour in the 1820s during an economic and population boom for British colonisation of Tasmania. Situated right on the waterfront, this colonial complex was the engine room of the British Empire's holdings in Van Diemen's Land. Goods, supplies and general provisions went from here to the various outposts and settlements throughout the colony. And it's where bonded goods such as rum, tobacco and other items were held until taxes and duties were paid to the government. The Bond store is home to three permanent exhibitions that explore the first 100 years of European occupation of Hobart and Tasmania. The exhibitions cover the British approach and attitude to their new island home, the ideas and customs they brought with them from Europe, and how these ideas and customs shaped Van Diemen's Land and still shape Tasmania today. There's also an investigation of frontier violence and the Black War of the 1820s. The museum has created resources to help you and your students get more out of your visit. This is the teacher's backpack, containing hands-on objects and information which you can preview on our website. You can reserve your backpack when you book for your self-guided visit. There is also this teacher's guide, Our Changing Land, Creating Tasmania, a downloadable PDF available from the TMAG website, full of additional information and ideas for your self-guided tour. Let's have a look inside. Here on the ground floor, objects have been chosen from the TMAG collection to explain how the British worked to shape and understand this new land they were now occupying and settling. First, there are showcases featuring the native animals that the British knew little to nothing about. Many specimens of these animals were sent back to England to be studied by the experts of the day. The story of the governor's wombat is a great example of how inaccurate some of these early depictions of Australian animals could be. It was thought that wombat may be some kind of badger or bear, and when sent back to England, it was incorrectly taxidermied and then drawn as sitting upright. There are also displays highlighting some of the animals that were introduced to Van Diemen's Land as the colonists attempted to make it more like home. Nature was viewed as a resource. The British quickly began to explore and exploit the plants, animals and minerals of their new home. And only by doing so were they able to thrive in Van Diemen's Land. Throughout the exhibitions you will see these green text panels and a range of interactives created with a younger audience in mind. These can provide your students with an additional avenue to understanding the exhibitions. This exhibition introduces some of the key ideas the British brought with them and how these ideas shape their new home, such as convict labour, the written word, weights, measures and money to encourage fair trading in the growing colonial economy. It was a world view shaped by numbers and measurements over nature. As you walk through this gallery, you move through time. More and more of the domestic objects on display become locally made. Some with free settler labour, others with convict labour. You will also experience the watershed transition of the 1850s, which saw the end of convict transportation, the formation of a more representative parliament, and the renaming of the colony from Van Diemen's Land to Tasmania. This area explores an emerging Tasmanian identity. Were the people British, part of the empire, Australian, or Tasmanian? This is explored through royal visits, grand exhibitions, burgeoning tourism, and Tasmanians volunteering for the Boer War. Throughout the Bond store you will see these symbols and numbers. They are part of TMAG's Shaping Tasmania online exhibition. 100 objects across the museum and art gallery have been selected for their significance and you and your students can find more information about these objects on the Shaping Tasmania website. One of the integral parts of the British way of life was their attitude to land use and ownership. The invaders had no regard for Aboriginal land management and the Aboriginal people's deep relationship to country. This exhibition's multimedia displays investigate what first contact may have been like for Aboriginal people and for European travellers. There are displays, archaeological objects and text panels delving into the first British incursion in Tasmania at Risdon Cove and the killings that took place there in May 1804. The exhibition also explores the Black War of the 1820s. With up to a thousand people dying in this period, this gallery explores both sides of this bloody conflict and its aftermath. Finally, there's a reflection and listening space where students can read books or listen to Tasmanians' opinions on the Black War and its legacy. The Bond store is full of rich displays and stories, 
and there's a unique opportunity for you and your students to delve into 100 years of complex and layered 19th century colonial history. Nothing beats experiencing the real thing. We hope you and your students enjoy your visit to the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery and that we'll see you here soon.